The through body problem is the only work not written in English that I put on our syllabus. I am generally reluctant to teach works not written in the language we study them in. Um, I made an exception for two reasons. One is the real importance and freshness of this work, and that's the most important. Um, and the second is the, the great fortune Lou has in his translator, Ken Lu, um, no relation, who is a Chinese-born American science fiction writer in his own right, an award-winning science fiction writer in his own right. Um, when you get some free time, uh, when you're on quarantine but not taking classes, you know, you might try Lou's uh, book of short stories, The Paper Menagerie and Other Stories. He has his new collection just out as well. On the one hand, um, the three-body problem stands in here for it is the kind of exemplar in this course for the new body of Chinese science fiction that is just now beginning to influence English language science fiction. Um, it's an exciting it's an exciting moment, it's an exciting movement we're, we're hearing from these Chinese voices, and it's, it's been really terrific. Um, if you're interested in reading more for free, um, the online magazine Clark's World often publishes translations from the Chinese alongside English language originals um, from the English-speaking world. On the other hand, I don't want to make Lu the ambassador for all of Chinese science fiction. He is a, an exemplary, but not a representative or a, not necessarily, or he is not the damn ambassador. This is an important Chinese science fiction novel. He is not the body of work. I especially want to frame, I want to begin our conversation about this by framing it in terms of this relationship to a famous English proto-science fiction novel, and one of the most important ancestors of science fiction, H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. Unmistakably, this is a very modern update on Wells' alien invasion narrative. War of the Worlds in the 1890s invents the genre, the trope of the alien invasion of Earth. This is the most sophisticated recent updating of Wells. Wells's tropes have been used. The War of the Worlds alien invasion motif has been used um, by sophisticated and very unsophisticated writers ever since doing their own spins and creating their own ideological spins. So I'm going to go off syllabus for a while to talk about Wells's War of the Worlds and then talk about how Lou is echoing and answering it. The main thing about War of the Worlds, if you don't know, in Wells' War of the Worlds, set in the Britain of his day in the 1890s, where they are suddenly invaded by Martians, who are technologically superior and have launched a surprise attack on the British Isles. Um, they've got flying saucers and tripods and walking tripods and heat rays. There's nothing the military can do. Um, how are they finally defeated? virus. I know. I know. I don't want it to be topical. It just is. That's great. This is actually a strangely appealing narrative that gets used over and over again. The idea of being uh, attacked by technologically superior aliens is apparently thrilling, and we want to tell that story over and over again. <laughs> um, um, though most retellings give much, including Lou's, to be fair, give much more credit to human agency, Wells' um, relatively depressing or daunting conclusion is that, like, uh, yeah, the humans don't actually defeat the Martians, a disease does. Wells, as always, is telling this scientific romance, as he calls it, in order to make a pretty clear ideological point. It is a point, he is, Wells is telling this story as a metaphor or analogy for colonialism. It is a shoe is on the other foot story because Wells is an enormous leftist. If you think the people on our syllabus are leftists, and mo many of them are, um, you think Kim Stanley Robinson's a leftist? I think Kim Stanley Robinson's a leftist. They are nothing compared to Herbert George Wells. So if I really wanted to get all the lefties on the syllabus, I'd just start with Big Daddy. Um, but I didn't. 
Wells tells World War of the Worlds to kind of let the British public have something that doesn't clobber them in the head, but like allows them to think through what's the experience of just being around, sitting, eating dinner, minding your own damn business when um, a previously unsuspected high technological group comes in and invades you by force and violence and just starts setting everything on goddamn fire, right? The real question is, how would you like to be India for a change? Englishmen, many of the retellings, and there have been infinite retellings of this, try to kind of put an ideological control on, um, on Wells' story. What's interesting to me is Lou is retelling, is clearly retelling the War of the World story from a national context that has survived colonialism, that is dealing with foreign influence, which means Western influence. It is the War of the World story, but told not in, um, not by the English-speaking colonial imperialist power, but told in a power that the English-speaking world has dominated and colonialized. Much of China, when Wells wrote War of the Worlds, much, much of China, chunks of China were British possessions. Hong Kong, for example, but not just Hong Kong. Many other parts of China were concessions to other European powers. Here, the, uh, the Trisolarians are and are not the Westerners. The problem of the three-body problem is how does one deal with the technologically superior invader and how does one want to have, catch up to it? Interestingly, and there's a wonderful hard science twist to what we do, we take seriously the actual length of time it gets, it would require to travel between planets, or Lou does. Lou is trying to be honest about his science, at least some of the time, and it's a fairly granular, and it, there is a pleasure in how seriously he takes the science. Um, the question of how to catch up with the invader technologically. They're ahead now, but we can catch up with them. And the fear that the innovator wants to sabotage. There's also, but th this novel also did, and that, that is already a kind of rich and interesting question. And I'll admit, on an inter some interpretive levels, I am wrong footed by this. I will never see this novel from the inside. I am always reading as a trisolarian, in a way, as someone from the foreign power that has uh, that sees China from the outside and has a history of being more technologically advanced than China. Um, there will be at least there'll be other a couple other videos. One we might talk about what's going on with like West and Eastern history in the game in the three pro in the three body problem game itself, the Trisolari game. This is complicated by the fact that there is real sympathy on some level for people who would who are Western sympathizers. It is not an accident anyway. It is extremely important that this novel begins during the Cultural Revolution in 1968. Um, a totally uh, a totally dysfunctional government response that leads to social convulsions, where pro-Western professors are being uh, are being um, castigated and, and tormented um, and, and brainwashed and, and castigated. Um, and on some level, they are objects of cultural influence, the high heels, the lipstick, etc. The, they have been Westernized. They really have. On the other hand, being Westernized is where you get all the science. You can't be a scientist and not be Westernized is the implication and it is irrational. Obviously, the Red Guards are treated as dysfunctional and irrational. Yay, Yay's decision to side with the Trisolarans against the people of Earth, um, to say our government is so dysfunctional, I would rather be invaded by a complete foreigner, is in a way presented as a, not the right position at all, but a position driven by real historical trauma. But like, we can understand why would she do that? Look at how she's been treated. Siding with the Trisolarans is like siding with the Americans, um, only more so. And there's a reason, and the novel suggests that that is, neither takes that side 
but doesn't demonize it either. Ye is many things. She's not, at least initially, she's not crazy. She does bad things. So this novel is kept in like one thing Wells had never imagined is having a place in his heart, in his fictive heart, for the collaborators. This is a world or the world story where the collaborators with the aliens are imagined as having a legitimate grievance. What do I make of that? I almost don't know what to make of that because I am, of course, coming from my own very Western subject position.